What's going on? I am Tank. I'm Jay Valentine. And this is the RB Money Podcast, the authority. Yes, yes. On all things. Yeah. All things mm-hmm. RB. Oh my God. The pull up is here. Oh my God. Yeah. You, you, y'all have been requesting yeah, yeah, yeah. this. Mm-hmm. You know, me, me and this young lady go back like a six pack of scoliosis. You understand what I'm saying? We <laughs> were in the same place <laughs> at, the same. at the same damn time. <laughs> Trying to figure our R&B lives out. Without further ado, I'm going to stop talking about it and introduce you Be to about her. It. Her. JoJo. JoJo. Hey. JoJo. Hey, what is up? JoJo. Oh, what a warm welcome. Thank first, you first so much. First of all, give me, give me some of that. Cheers yeah. to you. Yeah. Cheers yeah. to R&B yeah. money. Yeah. Thank you so much. Cheers, nigga. Welcome back. Cheers. This <laughs> man has me drinking at 11 a.m. Mm-hmm. Here we go. It, you offered me true. a beverage. I, I, not, I said yes. We are having a morning uh, refresher. Mm. Okay? We're starting the morning off right. Um, you d- you chose to dive into the tequila. <laughs> That's pretty dangerous, but I'm going to let you rock. Understand what I'm saying? Um, I want to start off with this. You normally we like to start off at the very beginning, which we're going to get to. Um, so first is thank you for coming. It's my pleasure. This, Anytime. This conversation yeah. is super important and super needed. You're, you're, you're our favorite. Um, but then I want to go. I want to go here, and then we'll go backwards. Okay. I remember us being in the studio when you were when you were younger, much younger. And I remember I had this song, this four on the floor song. <clears throat> Around <clears throat> the world. Oh my god. Yes. Tanking his. Around the world. Tanking his glow stick. Listen, I right. always have. I always have glow stick ambitions. Always. That's, that's just me. And I remember going back and forth with you about this song and and it got to the point to where you were in tears because because in transparency I'm saying this white girl can really sing let's take advantage of of all of this the crossover the all of this and all of that and you were saying to me I'm a soul singer I can sing I'm not anything but a singer don't box me in here. Don't box me in there. I just want to sing from my heart. And you cried about that. That sounds very on brand for me. And you <laughs> fought You fought to be authentically you. Period, point blank. And we were at odds then. I understood it later. And I'm proud of you for taking that stance and continuing to just be yourself authentically and unapologetically. Well, thank you for um, saying that. I really appreciate that. And I want to throw it right back to you and thank you for just being an example to me, being a safe male figure in my life who was so encouraging. Mm-hmm. You you pushed me lovingly. Yeah. And, and I always looked up to you and I still do. And I am very emotional these days. So I'm probably going <laughs> to yeah. cry. I, I think he's going to cry too. No, I'm not. <laughs> Look at your little tight eyes. I'm Look good. This is shit, man. No, no but <laughs> we've been recording for it's two years. Like, I'm fresh <laughs> on suspension. And this is what I come back to. Crying and shit. <laughs> but really, you 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 taught me so much in the studio and just through li- living your life and the the classiness in which you navigated the situation that we were both in yeah. with our former label and everything. So I just have the utmost respect. And I'm sorry if I gave you a hard time with that record no. because now looking back on it, I love that song. I love that sample. But of course, hindsight is 2020. Would it have changed my life? We don't we don't know. We don't know. But don't know. right, you make dope shit across the board regardless of genre it's really really cool well yeah. thank you and yeah yeah yes. salute to and y'all here we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and here still. we are still still yes. still, still. 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 Yeah, yeah. still. <laughs> um so as we like to do on the RB money podcast we like to go all the way back to the beginning okay we want to go Massachusetts. Back. Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah. go. Yeah, 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 Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah. Let's go yeah, back yeah. when the first person said or you first realize, oh, I got something. 
or or they say to you, girl, you can really sing. So apparently I started singing when I was two. That's what my mom, that's the story. I can believe that. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I can believe that. I can barely remember what I did yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. but I've been singing for as long as I can remember. And my mom and dad were both singers in their own right. So my dad was like a Blues Brothers type singer, like Mm. the Belushi, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He put on a suit and a hat and the whole thing? I mean, that was his like aspiration, you know? But he would play the harmonica, the guitar. And he loved, he had more of a soulful, uh, bluesy expression. And then my mom was more operatic, uh, church, soprano. And so both of them, I think, recognized in me, oh, like she she has what, what we have. And then maybe as I got a little bit older, maybe three, four, I would start bringing family, if they would come over, um, or if anybody would come visit, I would like take their hands and and like sit them down and, be like, and sing, you know? Right. So I got a good reaction from that. And I don't ever remember a time that I wasn't singing, that I wasn't performing. It was like a very precocious slash annoying thing that I was constantly doing. So it wasn't any, it wasn't like the parents saying, come here, Gary, I'll sit down, watch my kids. Do. It was that's you. Not, that's not how I remember it, it at all. It was you doing it. It was me. As soon as you walk in the door, <laughs> little JoJo. Yes. Hey, y'all. hey guys. <laughs> come hey. on, sit down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. I'll show you what I do. <laughs> I just wanted to gather people around. What were some of the first songs you were singing as, um, as a kid? Like Winnie the Pooh, you know, the Barney theme song. But then a little later, I really did love, I was drawn to soul. So Aretha Franklin and Etta James, like I loved her Matriarch of the Blues album. And uh, George Benson was, you know, it's on Broadway at, by, the t- by, by the time I was like, Five years old, I think I was singing. They say the neon lights are bright on Broadway. At I just, five. I yeah. believe it was about yeah, five. That is crazy. I mean, that I sounded a insane. A, a student. A student. A student. Yeah. I sounded so crazy. When I look, look back to videos, I'm like, why did you let me pursue this? <laughs> I was so bad. But I had so much, you know. You wanted spa. it. You I wanted really it. wanted it. You I wanted really it. loved it. And I, I felt like it was something that made me special. And I think that as an only child and someone who's, whose parents are fighting, there's a lot of tension in the house. I think I needed something that was an escape and that made me feel like people could focus their attention on me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So is, is, your, is your discovery moment like your moment of, hey, this can go somewhere, you know, further than where, you know, this can go past Massachusetts? Is that does that moment happen in Massachusetts? Yes, actually. So the I saw a newspaper like on the table, and it was like the Boston Globe, and there was audition section in the back, and I saw the kids say the darndest things so it was auditioning again. I was I like scouting yeah. my own what stuff. What is that? What is that? What is that? So it's like it's Bill a, Cosby. Yeah, really. Do you yeah. remember the show? Yeah, yeah, and it was like a, just like a kid saying like something so random that makes you laugh, and you know what I mean. It's mm-hmm. just like. Really, the shit that kids say when cameras ain't on, right? And mm-hmm. You catch them for the most. Okay. But that's what I remember it as. That's that's a perfect yeah. description of it. So, uh, me and my mom loved the show, and I saw that they were gonna be coming to Faneuil Hall in Boston. I'm like, Ma, can we go to Faneuil Hall? And she's Ma, like, <laughs> Ma. <laughs> yeah. I lost my accent somewhere yeah. along the line, yeah. but it was very it's present. Back Ma, <laughs> on today, <laughs> it's back. <laughs> so, um, she was able to take me. You know, she was cleaning houses for a living. And she was a single mom, and we were, you know, just really getting by. But she, she did allow somehow take me there, and and I got to be on the show. So that changed my life because then they invited me back on a second time and flew me and my mom and dad, who were like divorced at the time, like not fucking with each other. But it was so meaningful to me that they could be. Um, okay with each other for just yeah, a few yeah. moments to yeah. come support me in California. We all came together for the first time. And and then I did Kids Say the Darnest Things again when I was about seven. So you singing on there? Singing, yeah. Okay. I was doing okay. impersonations. I was doing like Cher and Elvis and Aretha Franklin and um, other people who I can't think of. So it was like a combination of impersonation and just being the little, little weird little shit that I was. <laughs> That's crazy. At seven? Yes. You, yeah. you flew to LA at seven. Yes. So that was my that was my <clears throat> first time seeing this this place. 
that that I that we all now reside in. Did that make you say, "Hey, I have to be in this place," or did that just say, you know, I know that there's opportunity. I know that I was I just can like, "I'm a this. star." Right. It just it felt like I okay, I'm supposed to be acting on television. Mm-hmm. I should be on a Nickelodeon show. I should right. do do the thing that like kid stars do because mm-hmm. I was already in theater as well. I had done like <clears throat> I got my first check from a professional musical in Boston. And so coming to LA, I was like, oh, this is where the kids who really work are. And I really wanted to work. Mm-hmm. Um, now through therapy and stuff, maybe it's because I felt the financial insecurity in my house. And I'm like, maybe this is something I can do to help. To help. Mm, wow. yeah. So yeah. Na- now through obviously yeah. looking at things from a different lens, I'm like, why did I want to work so bad? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you weren't being pushed by I, your parents I, at no, all? I wasn't. So no like momager, stage parent, that's not how I remember it. I, I, and she, if anything, was apprehensive and scared mm-hmm. of this this uh, sureness that I had. Yeah. I, I was so focused. I was like, yeah, I like animals. Maybe I could be a vet, but like, I want to be a singer. <laughs> so she was just like, where did this come from? And what do I do with this? Right. So. So you get your check. <laughs> when is the break? When is it like you are absolutely discovered? And someone is putting paperwork in front of you and your parents, and you guys are trying to figure all of this newness out. Will I ever go to school again? Never going to school again. Never going to school (laughs) again. I need a tutor. Uh, Shit is getting real. Exactly. Strangely enough, I'll just give you the cliff notes of this, but when I was like 10, I went to one of those uh, summer concerts like that the radio stations put on. So Kiss 108 is the pop station in Boston. Mm-hmm. I met Britney Spears that day. I sang my way through the security guards. Like I was like, hey, I want to meet Britney, um, you know, with my mom, obviously, and, and another person. I had called in to win the tickets. I was very like enterprising in that way. Yeah. So met Britney Spears, long story short, she and Larry Rudolph tried to sign me to her production deal. She was oh, wow. going to start her own thing. That was when I was 10. My mom said, no, you're too young. I was like, you're trying to ruin my life, clearly. <laughs> so at 11, I was being bullied so... You this, Did you say that? <laughs> no, it, I don't so remember. Mom, you're not going to let me sign you Brittany? Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> this is what you're telling me. I was about to say, you probably could have said that. It's right, right. Right. Mom, you're just trying to ruin my... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I could have never the dramatics. said <laughs> Well, white kids say wild shit say, to their parents. Like, you, can, you can say it. Fuck, mom! <laughs> Meatloaf! <laughs> Oh! I, I, I could not say that. I could not be like, she'd be like, you're going to get what you get. You're lucky. You never know what she's doing back there. Did you touch my drum set? <laughs> you touch my drum set? <laughs> I'll put my phone uh, to it. We're going too far. Um, so, okay. so, so that okay. happened. She said, I'm too young. I was being bullied really badly in school. And uh, I was in the guidance counselors all the time, just crying. <laughs> Surprise. But at 11, we moved to California. Uh, stayed with a cousin that my mom had uh, for pilot season because we were going to like pr- pursue that ex- that whole thing. Give them, give them, give them some context of pilot season, so people know pilot season. Because everybody that, that don't come to LA, they don't, yeah. they, don't they don't know mm-hmm. what that means. Yeah. Pilot season is when all the different shows, whether they're new or they're coming back for another. Oh yeah, the the pilot. So new shows are casting, and it happens during a certain period of time. I don't know when. But I think it might be like January. Or yeah, something. Like around January. Yeah. And there's like an exodus of 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 kids mm-hmm. and people mm-hmm. who are coming, coming to, to LA, LA yeah. staying at a place like the Oakwood or wherever. Mm-hmm. But we were fortunate enough the to have Oakwood. to have a, a cousin who lived in La Habra. So I did musical theater while I was there. I, I was enrolled in a school, and I also got um, a pilot called Ned's to Classified School Survival Guide, which was a show on Nickelodeon that I ended up not. It's a long ass. I man. know. <laughs> And um, so got that pilot, but then did a show called America's Most Talented Kids at the same time. Lost to a violinist. Mario Lopez was hosting the show, I think, unless that was another talent thing I did. But um, lost and ended up meeting James Womack, who was a manager at the time. He was in the audience and he was like, I know you, you know, I know you lost this one, but that means nothing in the scheme of your life. Like I see... A fee, I see the potential in you and I want to take you around to some people. So I'm like, <laughs> okay, I mean, my life is he's over. He's saying that as soon as, soon as you get off stage, pretty right. much. Yeah. He's okay. like, you are you really got something. So he took me and my mom kind of under his wing and it ended up introducing us to Vincent Herbert. Oh, wow. Who ended up being my executive producer 
of my first two albums. Mm -hmm. and, and that's how I was introduced to you. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So. And when is this? What year is this? How this old is are you? 2003. So mm -hmm. I was 12. You were 12. Yes. Or, or at the end of my 11th year. So we, we went around to a lot of different labels. More, more so, I think it was Vincent who was taking us around to different labels. And he had a, um, he had a production company. <clears throat> so he was also making the decision of where would he want to bring his production company that I would be signed to. Mm -hmm. So met with a lot of different labels, got flewed out to like, you know, mm -hmm. different, uh, like to Vegas to meet with the Maloofs and to um, Alabama to meet with like another business person who was starting something. Um, and then we ended up going with Black Round, which mm -hmm. was, so signed with them when I was 12 years old and then ended up moving to New Jersey to start working on my first album. So you were in LA. Yes. When you got signed. Exactly. And then you moved to Jersey. Why'd you move to Jersey? That's a great question. That's where, that's where their offices yeah, yeah, were yeah, primarily. Yeah, I think Vince had all this stuff Oh, we were, we were, we were, we were, what, what year? 2003. We were in New York. Okay. So yeah, it was very much in New York. In New York. Another, another thing that I do think is that the child labor laws are are less on the on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. ah. So I think it would have been really particularly hard for to me to even stay at the yeah. studio late in LA, uh -huh. things mm -hmm. like that. It's just a little more lenient. Um, you yeah, know, I, re in I New remember Jersey. that time. I remember that time. I remember because I've known Vince for a really long time, and in the music business, we all cross paths multiple ways and different times of our our careers. And I remember him telling me verbatim, I'm putting everything I have behind this little girl. It's like, what? What are, you, what are you talking about? What a what a thing to say. I think I I think I might have met it's you amazing. in the studio. Cause this was two, yeah, it was yeah, 2002, 2003, whatever, the, yeah, you said? Yeah. Underdog days. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's underdog days. Mm -hmm. And I wanna say he brought you by. Um and he was like, Jay, because I, like I said, I had known him, you know, for a while. He was like, Jay, I, everything. I said, e everything? You're like, that sounds risky. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> but that's what, in this business, <clears throat> if you're not willing to risk everything you have behind something, mm -hmm. you should not be in business with it. Mm. Yeah. Or them. Or, you know what I mean? Whatever it, whatever it is, whatever the thing is that you're attaching to, if it's a, if it's a, person, place, or whatever. If you're not willing to invest everything that you have into somebody, let them go to someone who will. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Because there are so many ups and downs in this business, and all we have is our time. All we have is our time. Like, it, like, like yes, your money. You can go throw some money at something. You can throw it at the wall. But like giving somebody your life to... To, to further their career, you have to really see something. And he saw it. Right. And I remember he played, I don't know what he played me, but I was like, I've never heard a little girl sing like that yeah. in my entire life. <clears throat> this, is what I'm, this is what I'm saying his, at that time. His I was belief like, never... in me changed my life, changed me, gave me a, a sense of purpose, direction, mm -hmm. and, and really helped to crystallize what JoJo, who JoJo was and who JoJo is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because before then I'd been Joanna. He's the one who, you know, called me JoJo, and that's where that came from. Oh wow! Okay. So he, that. yeah, I mean, I, I definitely felt that belief, and and that belief you had it moves mountains. Mm -hmm. It really can, and mm -hmm. it did. Yeah, I was right there on the verge of getting benched. And oh, <laughs> damn it! <laughs> I was getting benched at the time. Put JoJo and, in. And, uh, uh, uh. and JoJo, came, JoJo came in throwing touchdowns. Jesus. And they were like, you're never getting back in the game. Uh. So you're, oh, who, who's the guy that, that Tom Brees? Uh, uh, I'm I'm Drew Tom Brees. Brees. No, not Drew Brees, but I said uh, no, both of their names uh, together. Uh, Bledsoe. <laughs> Drew Bledsoe. Oh, Drew Bledsoe. Stop Damn, I can keep writing right now. Oh, shit, I'm mean, okay. God. Oh, okay. I, was, I hate that I, that's how I was it is. Sitting, I, was, I was sitting outside the label looking in like, <laughs> I'm not injured anymore. I'm not hurt, dog. <laughs> I can still play. You want me to play? <laughs> Yikes. That's okay. I got benched later, too. No. <laughs> it happens to all of us. It's, hey, man. <laughs> um, you know, it's... What I can say about that is that 
you know, I think we have some some maybe dark memories of of that place we were in. But, you know, I always, you know, I'm always a glass half full yes. kind of guy. And I'm always like, let's find the light in this dark situation. Let's find the thing. Um I'd be ready to shoot everybody. <laughs> you what? I said, I'd be ready to shoot everybody. And he'd be like, <laughs> he'd be like, nah, nah, Chief, I'm telling you, it's going to be all right. Yeah, We're going to figure yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah. That's, our, that's our balance. Is, that's it our you balance. That, is it you that shot up the office? Oh, shit. No, no. it's not. <laughs> no, I wasn't. No, it's not what you were saying. I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Y'all do remember that, right? <laughs> I'm done. No. What I'm trying to blame s- for some shit, but damn. What I'm trying to say <laughs> is before Jojo <laughs> went to shooting it up happened. the office. It happened. Um, is that I just what what I always go back to, what I always try to stay focused on and pull from that moment is that there would have been no me. I feel the same without way. Without Black Rock. I feel the same way, Tank. That's that's just how I live in that space. I remember when when we put out Freaky. And it just, it wasn't doing, it wasn't giving. Um, <laughs> it just wasn't giving. It was, back in 2000, it wasn't giving. I okay. wish we could have had that term back then. <laughs> no, um, no. I wish we let's, needed it. Let's get rid of that term nope, now. Nope, we're going to use it. It's not for nope, us, it's, brother. It, yes, it is. And, it, it translates. <clears throat> it translates. It translates. Um, and, but JoJo. And, and listen. Just say the shit didn't work, man. Listen, I'm, I'm saying that too. <laughs> We, we shot this, you know, five hundred thousand dollar video, Ooh. and all. Ooh, Ooh, we, 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 were cooking. Oh, we were cooking. Shit. We were cooking, and and Barry Hankerson, in the midst of this not working, walked over to me, and said, and said, "I'm taking over from here. I, we, I, we got a, you got a hit record. I'm gonna make sure you have a hit record. I'll take care of you from now on." And Take-a-gee. sure enough, sure enough, that maybe I deserve drop. Ooh. And he did not let nothing fall by the wayside. All of it. All of it. All of it. So. That was, that was a powerful <laughs> man, honestly. I, the, he absolutely the, was. the self, um, like you alluded to, there were dark times mm-hmm. and, you know, things that didn't go the way that we wanted them mm-hmm. to. But I can't help but look fondly at him for, for how I saw him, particularly. Yeah. As a preteen teenager, yeah, he was an yeah. uncle figure to me. I he looked up same. to him. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I, I was yeah. like, oh, everything's gonna be okay. Yeah, yeah. So i I have a, I have a lot of love for him still. Mm-hmm. It's it's in in a weird way. Is that no, like it's a, not a weird way? Do you know what I mean? I understand what you're saying. I'm in the same boat, yeah. and it's like, you know, even like even being, you know, I kind of I kind of got beside myself and went into a space to where. It created a different kind of friction, but you know I was old money. You know what I'm saying? I was I was hungry. My family was hungry. Right. And so you know I I went someplace that I shouldn't have gone, but I didn't know what else to do. So of course, even in that space of 2002 to 2007, where you know, like I said, I was sitting on that bench. You know, out of whatever situations that he heard or 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 you know. Whatever made him want to tap back in mm. to be a part of Sex, Love, and Pain and, and, and make sure Classic. that we had a hit record. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? I watched that. I watched him make, watch, I watched him build that record. Shout out to Eli McCoy as well. <gasps> from, Eli. from three spins to 3,000 plus spins. I watched it going to that office over there off of Laurel Canyon. Yes. We'll go there every other day and just say, how are we doing? What are we doing? Need to make these calls. Don't worry about a tankster. We're gonna get it. And Eli saying that or, or Barry saying both. that? Both. Yeah. Eli sitting in the room by himself. Yeah. Like, yeah we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna figure this out. Don't worry about a tankster. We're gonna tankster. get it. <laughs> that was Barry's name for me. Tankster. Don't worry about a tankster. But so all that to say is, um, what a place, right? What a and, place, and what, what a moment. What a what a what a way to, I guess, be tried by the fire. Ooh, that I love that phrase. And I think that's the perfect representation of that time. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'll ask you guys, as someone from the outside of that, because mm-hmm. I never, I never worked with Black Ground. I don't, I didn't. Only thing I know is, you know, third person. Yeah. But I asked from the business side, and time. So because from the outside, it's like okay, the success comes, mm-hmm. the music is great. Like your first album. You were platinum out the gate, right? Mm-hmm. Your first album's platinum. Second album's like 
double, triple, like you're doing numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And obviously then you run into label conflicts. But now a new artist may look at that as like, oh, well, if they holding up my music, I'm going to just stay on the road or I'm going to just, at that point in those years, there's no social media. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm sure that time is different and what you can do and how you can move around. But, you know, I think it's always, like, it's great to hear both of you guys' story of, of, of how you, like you said, just what you went through at that time, but how you're so appreciative of the opportunity. Because mm -hmm. you hear so many artists that are just purely on some, they fucked me over and this, that, and the other, and nobody did this, and if I didn't, but I don't see or hear that when I talk to you guys. I see and hear both of you saying, no, this opportunity led me to. Period. I think it's really important to look at various sides of, of something. Mm -hmm. And not everything is 100% terrible. Like, I am sitting here in your mansion because we, we are both sitting here because of- Came to your tour because- Yeah. <laughs> your yeah, sold out tour. Be, because yeah. of the platform that we were given. Yeah. <clears throat> I, if, if, if Barry, Vincent- Jomo, whoever, cho didn't choose Leave Get Out as my first single. I don't think I would be Great here. record. Mm, amazing I, record. I would have never, because yeah. like, as you know, I considered myself a soul singer. So this was very out of my wheel my wheelhouse. I wouldn't have constructed that for myself. Yeah. Mm. It literally gave me a foundation in which to build from. And, and then to follow that up, to have the opportunity to, for Billy Steinberg to pitch me a record like Too Little Too, too Late little, and, and me late. to be like, yeah. that's the song I want to be my single. And, and Vincent to be like, yeah, you're right. Okay, you're learning. The, you know, you're seeing how to do this. <laughs> it just wouldn't have happened. So I just think it's important. Yeah. Also, what what are we doing if we're living with such um, one-sided perspective of the world? And if we have hate in our heart, For I sure. still have pain. Mm -hmm. I still have a lot of pain, a lot of disappointment, a lot of, I'm very sensitive to, to things, to people's, like all of that. So that's where the tears come. That's where the, you know, the... The tension comes from, but but I don't want enemies. And I don't, like, if I, I just don't see the point of that. Right. Do you know what I mean? 100%. I want to be on good accord with everybody. Yeah. And to take accountability, too, for hmm. accountability is everything. Preach. Yeah. Preach. So as it pertains to the, the time between my second album and when I turned 18, nobody knows what I was going through in my family life. Mm-hmm. And I'll probably save that for the, for a book <laughs> one yeah, day. Yeah. Because that was more deeply painful than anything that was going on with the label. Wow. And my mom was managing me. That was a very interesting experience. Mm -hmm. And so it's not just somebody's fault. It's yeah. not just this person's fault. Mm -hmm. It's not just my fault. Yeah. Things culminate for a perfect storm or a, you know, things culminate and come together in a unique way. Yeah. And I think it's important to like, Dissect it all. Okay, I love that. Yeah, I love that. This, Listen, yeah, that's 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 amazing. It's amazing yeah. that that you can see it that way. I wouldn't be yeah. able to be here if I couldn't see yeah. it that way. Yeah, it would be too heavy on you. Too yeah. heavy. Yeah, I would have gotten way deeper into depression. Yeah, you know, and beverages. Exactly. Whatever drug is available. I always like that. went yeah. to the edge because I was sad and depressed. Mm -hmm. but I never fell off the edge. Yeah. Right. And that's only by the grace of God. I don't know how to explain it other it. than Come that. On now. Hallelujah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's you talk have about, them, them records. Yeah. Huh? Let's, yeah. Let's talk, let's talk about the success of it though. Before you, Come on. please. Come on. I don't Come mean on. to cut you off, no, but no, do you let's, do let's thing, talk bro. about the success of that, of being 14 years old Having Hits. a platinum record. Yeah. Yeah. Like, who wrote Get Out? So, Soul Shock and Carlin were the producers. Oh, oh my God. And then, yeah. like, he has the word white in his name, like Whitey or something. I cannot think I of the, because I wasn't there for the writing of it. Okay. It okay. was already created. Okay. I was 12 when I recorded it. The people it. in the comments are going to tell us who wrote Okay, yes. Yeah. Please yeah. get us right. Get, get me right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they stay trying to correct me. Yeah. Also. Okay. <laughs> That's why I was suspended. But I'm back. I'm back. I'm back now. I'm back now. Everything's going to be all right. But so you're, you're 14 years old. What do you do when you get a platinum record at 14? 
Just got, your, a, I just got a pizza. And your feet. <laughs> I just got no, a no, pizza. No, no. My no, let's feet? Go, no, let's keep diving into it. And your and feet. And feet. Did you so, know your feet? Your feet goes up. My feet you goes show up. Your feet goes up. You what? said you didn't know your feet? I mean, I, I probably knew it at the time. I don't know it now. I'm just saying, but you knew. I don't know what it was then. Right, right, right. You know what right, I'm right. saying? Your fee goes from, let's use, what's, what's the girl now that goes from from 4000 to 15000 Oh, yeah, yeah. We just heard let's, about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's use, ice Spice. Let's use Ice Spice yeah, 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 yeah. as an ice example. Spice? Yeah. In three weeks, she goes Oh, you ain't heard her yet? From, no. Oh, yeah. So oh, you three, thought I was feeling you? Yeah, you thought I was feeling you? <laughs> You much. You much. You okay. Much. Uh, so she oh, you goes from- You're going to love it. Okay. Love it. <laughs> I know you. So okay, you hear this record, you're going to love it. She goes from 4000 a show to 15, 20,000 a show. In like two in weeks, three though. Weeks. Yeah, like, wow. Like, that's that's to, talk about like, scaling. And has to call the people and say, my fault, we made a mistake. <laughs> I'm bigger, <laughs> than, bigger than, than when that. I did that. The numbers I'm are going to have to change if you need me to show up. So now you are, you know, 14 and, and the money's different. Mm -hmm. How does that affect? Were you touching the money at 14? Of course not. Okay. No. All right. All the, right. the money went into a Coogan account until I was 18, which means that, you know, it's that, from what I understand, that was created like around the Shirley Temple time or, mm -hmm. or maybe, maybe yeah, later, yeah. but to protect children from being exploited. Yeah, my Coogan money got took. But you, yeah, oh. go, yeah, 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 yeah. Go yeah, ahead. Okay. Did, you, did you get yours at 18? I did. I didn't get mine. Yeah. But, I yeah, got a finish, condo. Finish, yeah, yeah. Tell us the story because, whoo, my condo Are wasn't there. Are you serious? There. What? Wait, so, so you, you were working as a kid? I was going to take it like this. Yeah, 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 I had some street shit going on. Okay, <laughs> hey, you know what? so I was, I was yeah, yeah. not yeah, yeah. in the street. The people, I, the people, <laughs> the people came for mine. People came for y'all. It's like restitution or some shit. What? Yikes! Yeah, my 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 mom was was handling that, and then I had an agent and a, uh, you know that whole thing and business manager. So I wasn't really, I was not aware. I was thirteen. Yeah. You were not aware. Yeah. No. So were you aware of the difference in? Uh, in just your presence, you know what I'm saying? Because oh, yes. as you're as you're starting to do work and and, and go to these I shows, I couldn't go to the mall part, anymore. You know what I'm but then, then I realized now I was you can't, quite famous. Yeah. Now you, you're famous. And did you ever run into them punk ass kids that was bullying you? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I remember when that, they, you, know, you know that's what I want to know. Listen, <laughs> on my 14th birthday, leave get out and I already. I see you, Timmy. I see you. <laughs> Well, I, security, whoop Timmy's whoop ass. Whoop Timmy's ass. <laughs> <laughs> my uncle planned this really great birthday for me, my 14th birthday in Foxborough, which is mm -hmm. where, you know, the Patriots play. That's where which Patriots is where, play. Yeah, in which Fox. is where a lot of my family yeah. lives and planned this party at like the VFW. I don't know if anybody been from the Northeast knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, so, sure. um, Shout out to Willie McGinnis real quick, though, because that's my big dog. <laughs> Listen, you know what I mean? From, from the from From the, the Patriots. Patriots. Okay. Okay. Come, come on, come on. Hall of Famer, come on. So, through this 14th birthday, and I just remember everybody in the town trying to get in. And I was like, I came out. I remember that there were these girls who were mean to a friend of mine and mean to me, like who like put tried to throw me in a locker and like tried to who did throw me in a locker, right. you know, who just had me in the guidance counselors and they wanted to be at my birthday. And I was like, there was a security guard out there, and I'm like, tell them they can't get in. And he was like, You can't get in. And I was like, <laughs> So that made me feel hey, listen, so listen, good. Listen, listen. You can't get in. Can't get in. You That's can't, the new you, slogan. You can't sit with us. You That's can't the new sit with us. That's the new you can't sit with us. You can't get in. If you're mean, there you should can't be, get in. Hey, kids, don't be mean. There should be consequences and repercussions. You might be. Yes. Your classmate might be JoJo. It's giving karma. <laughs> <laughs> it's giving karma. <laughs> <laughs> like that quick karma. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So you so you felt it. So that you was felt the that change. was the highlight of the platinum record. That was the highlight. <laughs> and then also, you know, the the TRL, you yeah. know, all oh, of that. TRL. Going to New York. Like that was such a cool wow. time for me because first of all, I was the youngest of my of my peers of that of that like time that that music was being put out and stuff. Mm -hmm. I felt like such an outcast once again, kind of like I was in school. I just felt like, oh, where do I fit in? Mm -hmm. Because I'm a baby. Right, you can't get Nobody wants to hang out with me we'll because everyone is 18 plus. Yeah. Sierra was coming out around the same time, but she was 18. Yeah. So I felt like so uncool, even though people were like, oh my God, you're so cool. I'm like, no, I'm not. Yeah. I'm so embarrassing. You couldn't, take it, you couldn't take full advantage. No, 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 no. So, but I did feel that, yes, I was famous. People liked my music. That was cool. My songs would be playing on the radio. And I was like, wow. Oh, okay. Like everybody who made fun of me, fuck off. You know, yeah. uh, look at me. I'm at the Kiss concert playing it now. Like that was exciting for me. But as far as the money, I had no idea. And, and neither did 
uh, my mom particularly. So mm-hmm. we we but just extra went from, cheese on the pizza though. You just extra cheese yeah, on the yeah, pizza yeah. for sure. Okay. So Always. we went from being poor to then having money and being like, whoa, like well, what so do you did do? Did you know how to deal with it from not losing your mind because you watch so many kids stars not yeah. know how to manage the power that they have now because. The breadwinner has power, no matter how old you are. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So did exactly. you ever have a moment where you kind of either had to tell yourself, oh, I'm tripping, or somebody had to like grab you by the by the by the arm and say, Hey, you're still 14. Oh, my mom, my mom would always kind of pop the my inflated head. Mm-hmm. And, so you were having moments. Oh, definitely having moments because there was always this threat of <clears throat> even though I, there was already momentum in my career, always the threat from her of I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Tomorrow, you're, you're not doing this. You know, you're I'm taking you out of the industry. Uh, just if she, if I didn't do something that she liked, oh, okay. so there was that that kind of vibe. But then to that, I would say, I I pay the bills. You know, I y'all keep, were having that conversation. Absolutely, yeah. I I keep the lights on here. I wonder if my if my son said that yeah. to me. No, I, I can only Man, imagine. What I can only imagine. Square up. <laughs> And we did. Oh shit! Oh shit! Yeah! And then this corner. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Fourteen years old, <laughs> picked on, but now she's fought her way out. <laughs> Call the way out, Foxborough. Oh my god! I hate you. El ganador. <laughs> Do it in Spanish. Do it in Spanish. Y el sábado gigante. Estamos. Luchamos aquí, señor. Okay, Yeah, that was really good. Um, oh, no, that, he speaks Spanish. That okay. is incredible. You said wow. you had to really like. You had to square up. I mean, later into I mean, my teenage yeah, yeah, life. Yeah, but later into my teenage in. life. Yeah, again, there were a lot of different dynamics at play. So uh, that was wrong. <laughs> if I had a child and they tried to do me, I would definitely react in a different way. Yeah. But. Everybody's doing the best they can. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah, there was a there was a lot of uh there was a lot of friction and and I definitely had an inflated sense of self because I felt like you you know you're getting to live comfortably because I'm I'm working. So maybe that's not the way to look at it, but I was like, I you're driving a Lexus now and Yeah. You saw the you saw the difference. You saw the difference in your life. Yeah, and you exactly, realized yeah. that it was because of your work. Because of my work, her sacrifice. Yes. Her uh yes. her absolutely her giving, you know, her time to to support me. Is it almost a thing where you just kind of want your voice to matter more? Not necessarily that you want your voice to be the supreme in that dynamic? voice. Yeah. Is it just you like, listen, I have some takes, I have some perspective on this, like I should be, uh, my perspective and my voice should be accepted. Like, look, look yeah, at I, th- this. I think it was always that I, I kind of wanted, um, I wanted to work more. Oh wow! Yeah, so so she she wanted me to be a kid, and I didn't want to be a kid. Got you. I already felt like I wasn't a you've kid. Already, you've always been an old soul. Yes. So when you look back on that, do you wish that you would have been a, a little more of experienced being a teenager and a kid? Yeah, now that you can't be anymore, yeah, it's like we're, we're grown now. Yeah, I do think that that would have been a good thing for me as far as like relationally, yeah. learning how to relate to people in a better way. Like I missed out on, yeah. on Mom's those was years. trying to give you balance. She was trying to give me balance. Um, and I hear what you're saying. Hmm. But again, a lot of different things I play. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, no, no. I, I get it because I grew up in the industry. I yeah. grew up, you know, singing in really early age and- not experiencing much of a childhood until my so father went to prison. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Like, mm. you know, like he was, my, he was practicing. He was practicing really yeah, eight hours a day. Yeah, wow. like we were, we Real were life. full, we were full group, and and it was, we thought we were going to be the Jacksons, and yeah, it was rehearsal and rehearsal. And even if you quit the group, you still got to rehearse. What? Like this shit don't this Hold don't on, make why? sense. I'm this not in the group. <laughs> Because Let me it was because pretty much it was just like you're not quitting, you're not quitting, and this is what's going to get us out of here. So I understand, I understand that dynamic, and I and I and I had a moment when we when we were um, when our album was out. Like I got my record deal when I was nine or ten Jeez. or something like that, and I remember Ooh. going and performing, and before I even sang my part, they started screaming, and I was like, "Oh shit!" You're like, "I'm cute." 
They like me. I mean something. I mean here. something. <laughs> yeah. What? What you say? Yeah. Huh? You, everybody all right? Everybody? <laughs> you, ever heard, you ever heard of a Spanky Johnson? Spanky Johnson. <laughs> right? Like I had that moment and, but obviously I was in a group with my brothers who were five years older than me. They were twins and they just beat me up pretty much after they like, nah, you little punk. Like, nah, that's shit. not how I go. But mm-hmm. that kind of kept me you know, at least in a space where I didn't lose it. Yeah. And then we just, you know, our, you know, our, we had some other stuff that went on with our group. So it, it never fully reached its full potential. So I don't know how I would have reacted at 10, 11 with a platinum song. Oh my God. I, album, I can't imagine. You know what I mean? So I mean, that's I, why I asked. Right. I think it, it was a kind of a bit of a conflict because people would encounter me, or at least I thought I was presenting as people would be like, how are you so grounded. How are you so down to earth? But then my mom was like, you're acting like a little bitch. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> what's true? <laughs> right. Am I? A, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It was very confusing. Well, because it's like your interaction or your, con- it's always like that. Like you're in the safe space. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You're, I'm like, I keep the lights on in here. You, like, you wait, but you know, <laughs> for some reason, when it just clicks, when you cross that threshold, you turn into the professional. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. And you and, were acting very early. Yeah, yeah you yeah. already. Yeah, yeah, you already, you already knew and how the to, training and the tutelage. You, are, you already know how to <laughs> get right in line. Yeah, and yeah. And, and, and and be a pro in whatever space you need to be in. I guess, yeah. Yeah. So you had the people out here thinking you was like, oh, little JoJo, she's so sweet. Yeah, but even Katie, who, pizzas and shit who has people. worked with me forever, she used to be a black Shout woman. Out to Katie and now she's, yeah, yeah, she's my manager. Yeah. And I mean, she was like, I thought she's like, you were a piece of work, Joe. And I'm like, I, I'm sure I was. I'm sure I was. So let's let's move after eighteen. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't have to get into the intricacies of um, of of the separation. Yeah, mixtape JoJo. Mixtape JoJo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but let's get into okay. Now I'm able to breathe. Are you in LA at this time? I'm able. Yes. yes. So I moved to LA at nineteen. Mm-hmm. Um, I I was in Boston from eighteen to nineteen. Moved out here. And was just in the studio constantly. In the studio during the day, partying at night. It was like my college yeah, era. Yeah. You used LA as your college era? Yeah. I love that. I know. Isn't this such a dangerous Woo! I love that. Such I'm, a dangerous I'm thing. I'm so no, glad great. you're here. It's oh. great. But still alive, you <laughs> mean? Yes. Me too. I really think about that. I'm like, how am I here? here? This, LA was college for me too, me though. Too. Was me too. it? Was but it? For oh, a young girl, though, it's, it's, it's different. way different. Yeah, yeah no, way no, different. no, no. It's yeah. way different. Yeah. It's way I'm, different. I'm, I'm grateful that I made it out. As unscathed as I did, mm-hmm, you know, it could have been mm-hmm. a lot weirder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so, what is your process now? Now that you're, you know, out of the black brown situation, and you're, you're looking for new life and the next move. So I, I was I put started putting out a couple mixtapes and like my Marvin's Room remake and mm-hmm. all that stuff mm-hmm. during the time where I wasn't out of black brown yet because I was they still owned my voice so I was trying to find ways to put out music but not make money from it gotcha. so that's what what like and this, the, at this point is social media is kicking exactly, off exactly yeah. yeah so that's the whole yeah that's so yeah. Yeah, please give us that that so time was, and, and what you were doing to stay relevant stay I, in the space I was, I was just talking with my fans really telling them to a certain extent what I was feeling going through how much I wanted to put out music, how much I wanted to tour or whatever the case was. I don't really know why I didn't tour that much then, but maybe it's because I didn't have new music to promote. Um, but then I did some little things with with the mixtape. So Twitter was a game changer for me. YouTube, this was all kind of the precipice of that being the huge deal that it is now. Yeah. And I put out my first mixtape through Bandcamp. And it had yeah, I remember a ridiculous number of downloads first week, which was so encouraging. Like I was like, it gave me, you know, some, some, just a sense of purpose again. I was like, okay, this is what I'm meant to do. I love this. I have an amazing fan base and they're here for this. They like what I'm doing. So after that, continued to release some stuff, was able to finally get out of the deal with Blackground and uh, signed immediately to Atlantic. Started working on an album I was signed by an executive, Aaron Bashuk, who was the a and there at the time. Mm-hmm. And we started working on on an album there. But then, as you know, you know, musical chairs happen. And then, you know, this person leaves. And then you try to keep making an album. It changes direction yeah. a little bit. And so that was my experience with The Making of Mad Love, which huh. was my official album, like, comeback after 10 years of not putting out that was wow. 10 years? An album from 15 to 25. I didn't realize it was that long. And the crazy thing about that is, you know who Aaron's 
first record that he and R? Tank? Yes. Which one? After Tank. Now and Never. Got off of Black Rock. That's right. Black So. Wow. When we did, when we that did now crazy. and now, that is crazy. <laughs> it went to Atlanta. This is Aaron's first time A and R anything. Yeah. So really, it was me and Aaron. Whoa. It was me and Aaron. Aaron don't know shit about R and B. <laughs> like no, shit, it's my guy. I love him to yeah. death. But yeah, at me this too. time, at this point, like Al, obviously, I made he's done amazing things. At mm-hmm. this point, young A and R, young white guy, they're like, yeah, we did the new deal with Atlantic. Here's your A and R. Yeah. Like, I don't even know how to pronounce this nigga name. <laughs> Aaron Basia? What's your shit, nigga? He's like, listen, guys, got a few records I'm gonna play for you that I really like, that I think feel really good for where I think you can go. Here we go. <laughs> and we were looking at Aaron like, we're gonna turn it now. We're we gonna <laughs> spend- we're gonna show you how to do this. Don't worry. Hey. Don't worry. Don't worry. You're gonna still you get your credit. credit. You're gonna just, get your AR credit. Just roll Just with let us. it happen. Roll it. And so it, that, that process, like we just we became friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like we just yeah. really hung out and cooked up together. Yeah, and He's but super that's crazy. Open, open, that, and uh, and wanting to learn. I, I think yes. Is, no, he know, was is, absorbing is why, completely. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Completely. It's just it's just interesting that both of you guys mm-hmm. come from the same scenario and situation. Mm-hmm. Go to the same label. Yes. Get the same A and R. That is really strange. Did you think you I was that? following you? <laughs> I, I didn't know that. Did you, are you like this little chick? Is uh, I was like, and I was like this. I don't know what's going on over there at Black Ground Gita, but it's room over here at Atlantic. <laughs> oh, you, shit. If, if you, hey, man, you got to relax. If you can just get on that railroad. <laughs> oh, yes. And, and come on, Gita. And come on, Gita. Get on down here to this Atlantic Records. <laughs> They got lemonade and biscuits for, oh, for everybody on this side. Man. <laughs> hey, listen. <sighs> shout out to shout out to Big Flint. Flip was like, he that's it. He said there's a small window. There's mm. a small chance, my brother, that you could be out of there and over here. Yes. And um, and what's what's my guy um from Atlantic? Um Craig Cameron? Not Craig. Mike Kaiser? Nope, not Mike Kaiser. Um, uh, he, he write, produce, sign all the writers and all of that. I'm like, he's gonna he's gonna be mad that I'm forgetting his name right now. Oh, Ball Mike Karen. Mike Karen. Oh yeah. So Mike Karen was the first person to come to me to say, you know, I think I think you should I think you should come to Atlantic. And I was like, I don't even know what that means. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then I'm also saying. You shouldn't say that out loud because <laughs> these people are dangerous, right? <laughs> should we talk right now? We should use sign language because <laughs> man, this, this, we write you a letter. This could get it. ugly for both of us, oh, no, right? Oh no! And you know, just I'm mean, just speaking about my path of just going to Atlantic Records and them um, showing me um, something at that time that I didn't think I was even worthy of, mm-hmm. you know, in saying, you know, sitting down with with Mike Karen and then with uh, um, Craig Kalman and Craig Kalman saying, yeah, yeah, we're going to do this and we're going to do it as long as it takes. Mm. And I was like, what? He was like, mm-hmm. yeah, we're going to, as long as it takes. We're, we're in. We're in with you as long as it takes. Yeah, that like, that's what you deserve and that's, that's what belief is. It's That's not what just, belief is. Yeah. 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 So does the Atlantic situation, are you saying, you know, people change, things move? Does that become a, a staying place for you? Or do you or do you even move again from I that moved. point? I okay. moved. I moved again. Um, so I kind of continued to to move where Aaron moved. Because wow. Aaron okay. and I were, you know, yeah. so so tight. He had such amazing belief in me. Mm-hmm. So as he, as his career was on Ascending, the ascent. Sure. Yeah. He was like, "You should just come with me." <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, right. So I did. Right. So I did. So I had a, so went from Atlantic, then uh, Warner. Where oh, I mean, somewhere else, real quick, where where he made a pit stop, didn't end up putting an album out there, and then uh, to Warner, where he became chairman. Mm-hmm. So it was just because I really do believe, and this is for any artist that is going to be a part of the major label system, having an advocate having a a person there who is your point person who you really speak the same language with who believes in you mm-hmm. who will go to bat for you that makes a big difference very important. it's also very important obviously for an artist to be 
self energizing and to stay, you know, to uh, be self sufficient, to to move the needle forward, to keep going. Like you can't look to a label to tell you what to do necessarily. Yeah. Um, because that's not how it works in 2022 anymore. Mm-hmm. Oh. But to have a person there in the building who believes in you, that's why I felt like it was going to be, you know, important for me to to stay with Aaron. So are y'all are you putting out mixtapes as you're moving around still or you stopped that though? No, so I really started touring again okay. with, with Mad Love. Mad Love is where I went back to the touring life and was able to sell that out and really get a sense of, oh, I love this part of, of being an artist. I mm-hmm. love to be on tour. I love to be busy. I learned how challenging it can be to maintain a level of vocal health. For sure. While you're doing three yeah. shows in, in a row, then you have one day off and then you might have two, whatever. I learned that that schedule doesn't work for me. I need to have like two shows maximum, then one day off, then two shows. I can do it like that. Mm-hmm. But that third show, if I'm not completely silent, like I just, you figure out the gets, what, what works it, for every particular instrument. I agree. It gets tricky it gets on that third real show. <laughs> tricky and sticky. So I want to yeah. give people my best. So I was like, let's, let's, Change Let's up the schedule up. next time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So Mad Love is when I got back into that. And then from in between Mad Love and then my next album, Good to Know. Um, did I do a mixtape? I don't remember. But after Good to Know, which was in 2020, then I released like an EP uh, because I was going through something and I felt like I wanted to share it with people. I was going through a serious bout of depression and anxiety. Mm-hmm. A lot of people were with the pandemic. But for me, it started... Before that, just what what am I, what's next? A lot of us feel that way. And I wanted to put out this project and see if other people would relate. And yeah. it made me feel less alone. And it was a part of my healing to even share what I was going through in that project, which is like the most recent thing I've released. Dope. I, can yeah. we check, I recently saw you, uh, San Diego. Yes, was that, San Diego. Was a, that was a frustrating show, but it meant so much to me that you and Zena were there. It was frustrating. Yeah. What happened? If you, if you, if we can get get in that, the inside that that venue was, um, I was having sound issues. Mm-hmm. I was not feeling my outfit. I felt like my my things were showing in a way that I wasn't comfortable with. To be in a venue that small where where people are below right you and can see up your see, skirt, yeah. I really don't like that. Yeah, you were you were you were you were dressed. I was dressed. You had on the. I had on an outfit. Yeah, you had on an outfit. But you I know, like, I was like JoJo's legs are out, babe. Yeah, the legs, legs is out. Are, <laughs> um, the thighs are out. Babe. And obviously, I don't mind you know showing what I want when I want, but I just didn't like people being like, under you, under me, yeah, and yeah, seeing yeah, up my yeah, skirt. It's like somebody yeah. really, under the escalator as you're going right, up. Yeah, because like, hey, yeah. they are clearly doing that. <laughs> I so love I, her yeah, song. Yeah, that shit ain't cool. So it. it was just like the configuration. I um, so I was like, okay, never again. Because you, cha- you changed and I came back. Hey, some, guys, I'm more jeans comfortable on. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just just put on this two piece jeans. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's but that's also a part of professionalism. Yes, mm-hmm. because most people think that and and owning who you are in your career. Mm-hmm. Because most people think I just got to do it and I got to be out here butt ass naked. Selling this. And I didn't know what the setup was. But then you get out there, you realize like, oh, actually, this ain't cool. Hey guys, I'll be right back. Right. And they'll wait for you. Yeah. Absolutely. They yeah. wait for you. Did, you did the change smooth. <laughs> I tried. Thank you. Did you did the change yeah. smooth. Thank I mean, because, you. you know, we're we're backstage and, you know, we we just no show. You know, we can kind of see everything. And I'm like, and then when you came back and even said it, I just thought it was a change. Right. You know what I mean? We, well, the we jeans were wrinkly. Yeah, but. we didn't notice that it was about, you know, about comfort and about how you were feeling, as, as you're explaining right now. I just felt like it was part of the set. Yeah. And so that's how you made it feel. Oh, until you really. said it. Yeah, I just had to change, guys. You know, jeans feel better, feel safe. Let's keep going. Right? <laughs> I, I continue to learn things about myself through, through every single day. Mm-hmm. I learned that I need to feel good about what I'm what I'm wearing when I'm on stage. I need to feel good about how I've prepared. Preparation is is like integral for me. Mm-hmm. I don't like to just necessarily wing things. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I've learned this through, you know, crashing and and Yeah, no, experience is the sure. best educator. It for really sure. is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So even now, you know, this many years into my career, I'm still like, oh, okay. N- new thing I've learned about myself. You are so many years into your career. And I get this question a lot. Excuse me. What keeps you going? Because 
as I see you now in 2022, it's always smiles. Like, you're like, you're happy. You're like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, as we spoke earlier, everything that I've had to go through to get into this point, I'm with it. You've yeah. accepted it. And you've just accepted the light in all of those things. What is that thing in 22 that is keeping you, keeping you alive, keeping you going? It's my belief that I've only scratched the shirt, the surface of my gift. Talk that talk. Talk that talk. Yeah. I used to really think um, at a certain point that maybe I had, I had, maybe my voice was on the decline, or maybe, you know, what what more do I have to give? I've I've already reached more than I could have ever imagined as a little girl, mm-hmm. accomplished like beyond my wildest dreams. Mm-hmm. But I really believe that on the other side of personal freedom is another level of connectedness. Mm -hmm. And when I'm able to show up as my authentic self, that will inspire other people to be their authentic selves. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's now my mission is to be be a vessel for amazing songs, Mm -hmm. take my ego out of it, and bring people together just like I did when I was a little girl asking family members and friends and people on the street to listen to me sing. Yeah. I really think that by me connecting to that pure joy that I get from singing, that can be hopefully a a blessing to somebody else and help them connect with what it is that they were gifted with. Even if that's just to, to, to be a listener, to be part of a community, to be present, any of that. I, I know that that's my work moving forward is to to let go, to shed those layers. Like you said, the glass half full approach, I'm sure you've done work to get to that point. Yeah. And so the letting go doesn't always come easy, but it's it's a choice. For sure, every day. Well, I think sharing that is the healing. And it's not just for you, like you said. It's for those who get an opportunity to um not even just not even just to see you, but to hear you. Because you know those those vibrations alone, yes, are, are are comforting to some, healing to some, helpful to some. You know what I mean. And the stories behind it, which is why you know we really wanted you here to first and foremost give you flowers on flowers. Absolutely. On flowers. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. But also to for you to speak, you know what I mean, to speak that life into everything that you've been through. And everything that you're doing moving forward. I thank you so much. Yeah. I, I think that this time where TikTok is, you know, where we're getting our news and our information and where, <laughs> right. where we're um, finding I knew, music I knew he was and stuff. Bring up TikTok. <laughs> I think I, what, what I, I want to say is I, I think it's a great equalizer. <clears throat> I actually think yeah. that um, authenticity cuts through more so than anything. I think that our attention span is if something feels false we're like ugh, cringy <laughs> weird you right. know so i think that you it just kinda, get off it yeah. yeah we just move on to, to the next yeah. until something really hits us and resonates so i actually think that while yes it's it can be frustrating and we're like oh you know we have to do this stuff you mm-hmm. can also really find your community you're absolutely, and absolutely. so i yeah. think it's a great time to put the hands the power back in the hands of the artist connect them directly with the community mm-hmm. and you can kind of get a sense of what what people like. You just give it a try. Just yeah. put it out. So are so are you looking at all of those platforms as a way to? I mean, because obviously, it, like you said, Twitter was something that was really important for you when mm-hmm. you really needed it early. Definitely. I mean, later later on in your career, yeah. actually, in the middle of your career, mm-hmm. and, and and it really jump started rediscovery for you. So as an artist and a seasoned artist, someone who's been around and and done the old school music business at a very young age and now the new age music business, how do you go about that? Like, how do you manage what's too much Mm. and what's important that you have to, like, because let's be very clear. Social media is very important for recording artists. Mm -hmm. It's very important to... Let them, you know, get a sense of your personality, um, tease music, maybe jump in a challenge here and there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, how, 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 
how do you deal with that as someone who is already established and already has a fan base? Do, do Are you jumping at every challenge? Are you just like, ah, I'm going to do one here and there? Like, how do you go about that? I'm definitely not jumping at every challenge. And, and I'm not like, oh, yeah, I'm going to bless them with this one. <laughs> I'm just like, it, it has to feel like an extension of me. It has to feel like something that I genuinely want to play with or something okay. that I— because if it if it comes off forced, like the the viewer feels that, and I, I know that from being on the other side of it. When I see other artists who will remain nameless, but I I see one in my head right now, when they're like slanging their music around and they're like, "Let me shake my ass to this music and let me do a dance to this music and let me blah blah blah," and it does not feel like they want to do that. It feels mm-hmm. like this was a, a mandate that was put on them, mm. as opposed to I think that the way to make social media work for you as opposed to you working for social media is to find how you can be yourself on the app. And there's like so yeah. many different ways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just have fun with it. And and I think TikTok is more low stakes because it doesn't need to be perfectly curated. We used right. to think Instagram, like you have to have like a, this grid and it needs to be like color coordinated and all that yeah. stuff. With TikTok, you can yeah. just like say stuff and it, you can take clips of this podcast and you can, you know, lip sync something or you can tease a song. What or you can shake your ass, or you can try on an outfit. You can do whatever. And then you'll find people who like makeup, who like travel, who like, you know, plant-based cooking, who like uh, going to Michael Buble concerts, you know, Talk like yeah, yeah. all these different things. <laughs> yeah. And I just think it's really nice. Um, so, of course, we got to do things that we don't like to do. But you got to find a way to to enjoy even something that annoys you. Mm-hmm. Like when TikTok first came, and, you know, my label was like, you've got to push your own music this way. I'm like, ugh, how, how yucky. you got to find a way to just like. Get in it. To enjoy. Yeah, get in it. I know it's easier said than done for for me too. But well, I mean, because we come from. From a, a, old school. When it, when it was just. When you have just, to be a mystery. We just needed music. You just needed music. And also the mystery yeah. was such a big part of it. The mystery was the thing. And, and you could just show up and show people. What it is. What it is. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. just show up in the city like, I told you I was nice, right? Yeah. And now it's like, now that the labels have done away with sending artists Ooh, on, on promo the radio, tours, promo tours right? and all of these this different things that is we that, used to have now. Yeah. They don't do that anymore? No. Not, not as because, much. you don't have to. No, no because promo, you can promo tour promo from, tours your, in here, from your phone. phone. Yeah. yeah. I, I tend to feel like, and I and I, I really wanted to know that from you from an R&B sense because- Obviously, we deal with people saying that R and B is dying, or it's a dying genre, or whatever the fuck I don't they want to say. It sounds pretty week, alive right? to me. It's these very days, alive. damn. But what, but what I do say that I I wish that more R and B artists would get in front of it and get in front of the music and get in front of their personalities I think because that's a good point. what you know what what I what I feel like I found with my parents' generation and when they were trying to push out jazz. Mm. Jazz took on a very elitist. Oh, that's a great point. You know, persona of oh, I'm just too. You too know, cool. I, I don't need no, whatever I, you guys are doing. Mm. Don't sample my records, well hip hop. Studied. You know what uh, I mean? Like yeah, they yeah, were yeah. they were not clearing samples and mm-hmm. just all this other stuff that helped him kind of get phased out. Wow. And I personally would hate for that to happen to R and B. That's why Tank and I have even done this done this podcast. Because we're like, listen, we got to stand in front of what this R and B thing is, and we got to show people that we actually got personalities, and we're willing to, you know, have to talk to human resources about some of the shit we we gonna say. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I, I like I said, I'm I'm so passionate about R and B music that I I would, you know, I, I would push artists to just at least give these things a try. Instead yeah. of just being like, ah, well, when they when I when I go show up and I do my my shows, they, they already know, know what's they, they, they already they, know they, what it they is. They know what it is. Right. No, some people don't. I think that is such an amazing point and comparison that you just made as well, because history has a way of, you know, we can learn from history. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I love history, actually. So that was that really excited me. And I love jazz. Mm-hmm. So as I, we all I do. think that's a really great, great point because there is a sense. I, I think from my vantage point of this, you know, 
coolness over everything sometimes in R&D. Yeah, yeah. And I think that that can be sometimes to the detriment of letting fans in. Yes, um, yes. Because you want to keep up a facade. I don't think the facade works anymore. No. I think that people want The gift still works. The gift, gift, your gift works. still works. Right. But they actually like that, oh, hey, man, this artist is kind of funny or goofy or- Yes. Don't take themselves that serious. Like, one of the things that made me fall in love with Ari Lennox is her personality. Oh, she's great. Mm-hmm. Is she's her- great. Getting on IG Live and just being in bed and being bored. Like Summer Walker. Exactly. This like it's wait, I mean, I know yeah. more about Summer Walker than I've ever known about, about an artist. About Any an artist. artist. Right? I'm like, oh my god. And now I'm like, ooh, who is she? You know, who is she? <laughs> but you know, whatever. Because <laughs> that song could be about yes, remember what she said. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. we buy into that. And um it's not a new thing necessarily, but you don't have to wait for the biopic anymore. Yeah, exactly. It's playing out right in front of us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, well. Um, at R&B Money Podcast, um, we like to get into your R&B mind. Oh, okay. Um, yes, yes. Your, your R&B <laughs> makeup. Yeah. All um, right. Um, the DNA. We, we would like to know. This is, it gets, it gets interesting right here. Top five R&B artists. <laughs> of all times. That note was crazy, too. That was very crazy. That was, I'm going to say yeah. something in this top five. Y'all are going to agree with me, but the internet's going to be mad at me. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. I love probably that. probably why we're asking <laughs> <a question. laughs> I love that. Okay. Your, your are there top any parameters? Five, all, what, no. Huh? No time frame? No. Just nope. R&B in general. Your top, top five. Your top five. Yours. Go oh, there. my God. Okay. Don't look back for help. <laughs> no, no, no. I wanted to see if he, he knows what I'm going to say. Okay. okay. Um, top five mm-hmm. R&B artists. Mm-hmm. Okay. Where do I begin? Do, do, do I have to put them in order? You can no, do it. No, no. You, it's yours. Whatever it's yours. you want to do. Okay, great. No order and no prep. Yep. It's no, this was this no, no prep. This is never prepped, guys. Jasmine Sullivan. Come on, Jasmine. Come on, talk and talk. Don't start there. Who I love. love. Absolutely love. Mm-hmm. Wow. Usher. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bobby Brown. Ooh. Bobby! The king! The king! You better lay low. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! I hate myself for this, but R. Kelly. The I mean, chaos. listen. Listen. It has, it, I mean. la da 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 I hate myself for it coming out of my No, you, know, you can know. But you don't. understand. Just, yes, I know you know. We understand. Uh, um, Where do I go from there? I'm going to go to, for me personally, Music Soul Child. Ooh. And then I'm going to go. That's five. No, 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 that's four. That was four. That was four? That's four. That's four. Jasmine. Four. Jasmine. Usher. 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 Kels. Kels. Music. You're right. You're right. I muzzled my hands. Um, Anita Baker. Oh! Oh! oh. Woo. You got a cold oh. five. You got a cold five. Ooh, you ended it crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love it. Come you on, You ended come it on. crazy. I used to watch music in the studio. Mm. Sing perfect. Go over one yeah. line. For about an hour and a half. Oh, that, yeah. that makes me feel less crazy. Okay. And I was like, I was like, bro, you did it like 30 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. He just, it just needed to be placed. Yeah. This is not auto-tune. This none is about none, none of that. He was in with Warren Campbell when I saw him do that. This this line. And I was like, wait, that was, you know what? I'm I'm gonna leave. This <laughs> line needs to be placed perfectly i'm i'm just a yeah. millisecond off i'm just yeah. a, a semitone too he he was just <laughs> yeah. he was yeah. just that much of a technician people don't really listen to what music was doing vocally on yeah. those records they just enjoy his records and have a good time because they felt so go good go ahead and go back and but and dissect that go stuff, back and listen yeah. to what he was doing right so that's crazy but then anita baker is you know Jesus. I mean, she is probably my biggest vocal inspiration right now. She is like my my pinnacle. She's the one I look to right now. She's, she's yeah, just incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's keep going. Let's, let's keep going. <laughs> Your top five R&B songs. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, my. 
Yeah. I'm really, really bad at being on the spot. So you're doing I'm going to do my best. Let you know you're doing good. Um, let's let's say something from Joe to see. Let's say like, uh, can it talk to me? Yeah. I really want to meet you. Can I talk to you? Yeah. Really wanna know you. Okay, so. so are we doing a remix? <laughs> oh. Oh, 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 oh. I've been watching you <laughs> for so very long. Come on, man. Yeah, you can't. You, anything, Joe, you can't, you can't lose. Anything, Joseph, you can't lose. I'm with you. He's yeah. so nice to me. Okay, so it's Joe to see. Let's go. Okay, I'm going to say Cisco incomplete. Wow. That's a great fucking great song. song. That's a great record. Great song. Is that the one Montel Jordan wrote? I feel like Montel Jordan. I feel like Montel Jordan. Might be the Montel Jordan. I feel like Montel Jordan record. Wrote incomplete. Please Montel Google Jordan, it. come on the podcast. Hold yes. On. Shout out Hold to on. Montel that's Jordan. Let's not even. Let's not even play with. We have come smartphones on. here. Come on. Wow. Did I never, never Montel heard this. Did, did Jay Valentine Jordan. just win a thousand dollars? Jay oh! Valentine. Wow. Wow. Montel, wow. I just won $1,000. Montel wow. Jordan. Incomplete was fire. Was that the video Lisa Ray was in? I don't remember the video. Oh. I think Lisa Ray might have been in that Probably. video. I just remember Don Song when he, when he walked over. Yeah. You know Unforgettable. You know, don't, you, <laughs> don't you do this again. <laughs> that's great song. We waiting okay. on you too, Cisco. That's a great song. Oh, that's, I love Cisco uh, so much. Come back, flip your ass into the chair. Nigga. Yeah. <laughs> great second song. Let's okay, go. third song. I'm going to go with... Um, one in a million, Aaliyah. Life changer. Yeah. Yes, life changer. Life changer. Um, I'm gonna. I want to go to a different era. Mm -hmm. So let me go more toward like. Um, I'm gonna say I'll say caught up in the rapture. Yeah, Amita. you better. Yeah, you better. <laughs> caught up yeah. in the rapture. Amazing. Ooh, oh my god! I, I just Amazing. man, I grew up on those albums. That voice right there. Yeah. It's synonymous with my child. Like they said, it. your mama didn't clean the house good if you didn't grow up <laughs> to Anita Baker. That means your mama didn't know how to clean your house. Caught up in the, oh, my God. Okay. Okay. And what? I'm going to say that I, I think a new, um, a modern classic is uh, Pick Up Your Feelings. Huh. Jasmine. Come on. Come on. Come on. Pick Up Your Feelings. I think it's so good. I love the tempo of it. I think it moves. It moves. It's... Yeah, so I, I, I felt the way when I first heard it. I was like, she said that. That's what she want us to do. Pick up your it's so sweet. Yeah. She said feelings like yeah. it was nasty. Yeah. Like, yeah. Feelings. <laughs> I was like, who are you talking to? <laughs> you. <laughs> you. <laughs> that, that's exactly what I heard. What? I heard she, she talking to me. I'm working out to this album like this. Who is she talking to? She's mean, yeah. but it was so aggressive the way she was saying, and she didn't, she didn't, um, she didn't scale it down or dumb it down no. or or anything. Yeah. She was like, "Yeah, I'm gifted. Yes. Watch this. Yes, gift on display. Yeah. Gift on full display. Hotels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and yeah. what a bold choice for the album title too, as well. I, I thought it I was so. It. And she's she's like, don't even call this an album. I'm like, what? She's like, this is just an EP. Anyway, to me, it's perfectionist. She's it's always perfect. been in this kind of shy space like that. Well. Where I think that I think that we've moved or we were in a space where being talented was very tough, very frowned upon to be really talented. Yeah. Because everything's moving you had to so dial it back. fast. You had to dial it back. You know, it's hard for people to take enough time to understand even what that is. Their mm. ears aren't even tuned to. Mm. You know, there's a frequency that auto-tune and the computer has hypnotized everybody with at yeah, this point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody and can't so, sing to the black keys. They can sing to, you know what I mean? Yeah. They, <laughs> Seriously. It's just, they, they, they stay they, right in they here. Say, but when you start going up yeah, and doing yeah. that, people... Oh, I got to change the settings in the auto tune now. <laughs> <laughs> Go to chromatic. <laughs> <laughs> and add the E yeah, and yeah, the make G. Yeah, make sure it's yeah, so sounding funny. But, but it's like, she... she I, I, I can't speak from having that conversation with her. But I just remember being, even in 2002, where I was like, I'm a singer. Yes, and you these, are. And these songs, these people that are working, they're not singers. 
Like, this is what y'all want? Right. Y'all on this? If y'all on this, I don't want to be a part of it. I'm a singer. Even all the way down to, I did I did the, um, I did, what challenge did I just do? What was it with uh, uh, the, uh, the Fortunate Challenge? Mm-hmm. And I just, you know, I I dipped and- Oh, God, I, I need to check that out. I, I need to see and, what you did. dipped and dodged into some stuff. Ooh. And and and, peop- and there were people that said, that's horrible. He can't, <laughs> he can't even sing. About <laughs> you? <laughs> About Tank? And I was like, we are living in some yeah. wild- Because you might can't times. dance, but you can definitely sing. That's- <laughs> That's not true or fair. <laughs> That's okay. not true. I they go suspend dance. me again. Just the, just the <laughs> videos I was dancing in didn't work, but that doesn't mean. <laughs> I want to see you do the genuine dance. <laughs> yeah. What? I do genuine better than genuine. Where no. you at, G? You don't want this work with me, old man. Anyway, um, but that's just you know where we are, and I feel like I feel like she was. You know, just just me speculating. Her trying to find her her find room to be talented. Woo! She found it. And I don't even think that she. I don't even think she realizes what she's done for the creatives. I hope she does. Yeah. She's, I hope she, she does. got her shit off. She she's got, she got she's off. she's freed a lot of creatives. She's mm. created an under an, an overground railroad for people to overground. feel like, oh, I can sing. I can actually. Write yeah. some dope shit and sing some dope shit and it go crazy? Cool. I remember right. listening to that album. I was on one of my solo journeys in Sedona and I was taking a walk in the Red Rocks and I was digesting this album and weeping wow. at the freedom that yeah. I heard from her as an artist. Wow. And just being so inspired and yeah. just like so happy for her. Yeah. Me and me too. To hear, I me didn't too. know what the album was gonna do, and yeah. and all that it's done yeah. is phenomenal. But it was an accomplishment enough to have done it. Yeah. And I was just like, wow, this is so great. All right, we're not done. Okay. We're not. Shit. Done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what more on the spot? Um, we're building an R and B Voltron. Mm. Okay. So it goes vocals, style, performance style. And passion. All right. So let's start with the vocal. To make your R and B Voltron, who are you? Who are you grabbing the vocal from? One person. One, One person. I mean, if it's a male, no, I want to choose so Tank. Yeah. Period. Man. Always. <sighs> tank is the best male vocalist out there. Crazy. Wow. So you know what? You know what? Since I'm, I'm. Back off sabbatical. We gonna cheers to Tank Ben. And he look at this. He about to cry. My man is gonna cry. You know who you are. You know who you are. I'm not gonna cry. Gonna cry. Wow. Make him cry. But because wow, 2022 is the time of the woman. (laughs) I'm gonna choose a lady. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. And I'm gonna choose Jasmine. So I'll take it. Start there. I'll take it. Start there. Vocal from Jasmine Sullivan. Yeah. Easy. So Tank um, gets to sing background for Jasmine. Tank gets to sing which background. Which I will gladly do. <laughs> Give me a piano too so I can play yeah, extra yeah. keys. Jasmine, Tank will sing background for you. I will sing backgrounds sing and background. play keys. We'll Just let me know whenever Just you're going out. Um, let's go with the styling. Who do you want your artist to look like? Dress like? Aesthetically. Aesthetically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who going to put the drip on? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm, damn. Who do I want them to look like? Beyonce. Come on. Yeah. Custom. Yeah. <clears throat> Everything. Special. Everything special. Everything. Uh, wait, do I want them to look like Beyonce or Solange? I don't know, because both are custom, special. Solange. Art, different, artful, though. Artful, Solange is different. very fresh. I think Solange. She is very fresh. I think fresh. Solange is very. She's, she has this earth earthy thing, too, yeah. that's very organic. Yeah. That I think, and I know the bees want to get me, that I think B might have gotten from her. I, I think they're both inspired in, by in each some other. Way, in some way, shape, or yeah. Because I felt like Solange was, in my mind, out of out of their whole thing, she was the first like earthy one who was just like grounded in 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 these neutral tones and and in these linens and in this just comfortable comfortable space that wasn't overdone or over anything. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like she was there. So I mean, you you pick which one, whichever one you want. I mean. 
They're all they're kind of one and the same. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna say okay. So voice of Jasmine Sullivan, aesthetic of Solange. Solange, wow, mm-hmm. that's I love that. Um, performance style. Whose stage presence do you want to give your Voltron? Uh, Bobby Brown. Mm-hmm. There's no argument. Look at me. There's no argument to what Bobby Brown does. Everybody like this. You know stage. what it is, bro. <laughs> no, Ooh, you making her one man. Yeah, she's aggressive. Listen, I mean, we've. I mean, I was, you know, back there. You know, my first concert was, you know, the the new edition Any Heartbreak tour. Come where, on, where, Boston boys. Where one man was given new addition, everything they needed, by himself with two other dancers. He was giving them everything they needed. I was like, oh my God, he is is an animal. He's an animal man, a manimal. A manimal. He was a manimal. And he was only about 18, maybe at that time. Aggressive. I'm telling you guys, New England is different. It is, it is. Listen, I'm big up. Um, I agree. Okay, last one. Passion. Who do you want to get the heart from? Yeba. Hmm. Yes. I said what I said. <laughs> she said, I said what I said. Yeba's passion I said is what next I said. level. It's next level. You feel it. It almost is painful. First note. You feel it. Absolutely. I, I just really, really love her. Wow. Special. Special, special talent. Wow. Special talent. I can't talent. believe I just said that so, like, off the no, cuff. No, like first that. you said, I'm horrible under no, pressure. No, don't worry. But, and you we, said. <laughs> no, no, listen, <laughs> listen, 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 listen. She thinks she got off easy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what no, she thinks. No, no, That's what she thinks. No, yeah, no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Let's see how quick you is with this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we got a very important segment of the show. It's called I Ain't Saying No Names. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you tell us a story, funny or fucked up. Oh, God. And the only rule is we don't say any names. And it can be funny and fucked up. Because mm-hmm. usually mm-hmm. most things that's fucked up is kind of funny. Mm-hmm. So all you got to do is just not say their names. So this is JoJo's I Ain't Saying No Names with no prep. No prep. Hmm. Can you give me an example? <laughs> have, you, have, you, have you told one? Have you told one? <laughs> have Mr. I told one? Tankster? Did you tell one when I was suspended? I don't think so. Ah, oh, no I think, way. I don't think I told one. Can you start, please? To make me just a little more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Give me First some of all, this, like is, this has never happened yeah, I like in, it. in the history Thank you, Jojo. of I Ain't Saying No Names. Like, this has, this has never yeah. happened. Um, I Ain't Saying No Names. It's hard. So you put trying to put the pressure on me. This is yes. why, while you think of yours. I see what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I, see what, I, see, I see what's going on. Um, hmm. Yeah, thanks. I ain't saying no names. Do, 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 yeah. do, do. I ain't saying no names. Hey, Alien. Um, this is funny. I, I was. I was I was beefing with this with this with this one guy, like real beef. Um, and started over basketball, basketball beef, and I felt like this person wasn't being fair, you know. And we're supposed to be, you know, we're supposed to have common ground, you know. We're both artists, you know. We're supposed to play the game fair, you know. what I'm saying none of us play professionally, but the game is at least supposed to be played right. And this person didn't want to play the game the right way. Mm. And so since since he didn't want to play the game the right way, I decided I didn't want to play the right game, <laughs> the game the right way with him. And it got aggressive. It went into, you know, name calling. I'm a very nice guy, but I had been pushed into that other 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 place okay. where now your bitch ass niggas 
everybody you with, they bitches too. Who want it? Let's get it. All during the game. So the game is over. The game ends. I, I win. My team wins. And as they leave, they're still bitch ass niggas. <clears throat> Cut to, we go to the city that this person's from. And someone who's with me was like, man, you know, such and such would love to just, you know, they love you. They're big fans. They sorry things got weird or such and such, you know, got kicked off, you know, the wrong kind of way. But, you know, they would just love for you to come out to the gym, hang out and, and, and just hoop with them. And I'm like, fuck them bitch ass niggas. You know what I'm saying? I'm there. So it takes a little, little finessing, a little convincing to get me to go. I'm like, you know what? I'll go. Fuck it. Whatever. And so when I get to the gym, it's just me and the guy who, who I was with. And it's him and, you know, it's him and all his, you know, all his, all his guys, his goons. He's, he's, he, you know, we're in his city. And I'm expecting, you know, I'm expecting some static. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm all prepared in my mind to swing first. I'm prepared. But, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, it, 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 it sounded like a peace call. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to prepare myself just in case, you know, we got to get active. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? And it's only two of us. We may take the L, but I'm ready to take that. So we walk in the gym. And as soon as we walk in the gym, this person is like, he sees me. As I get closer, he's like, come on, man. You, come on, you know I love you, man. Come on, man. We can't be like this. And as he goes to give me the embrace, he starts tickling me. <laughs> <laughs> Where? Right here? Yeah, just like, you know, right in here. Okay. Now, the only problem with that is that I'm really ticklish. So... <laughs> I'm trying to tell him to stop. <laughs> Get off me. Tickle me, Elmo. <laughs> and he's tickling me. And I try to finally fight him off. And we dap it up. And we hug it out. And we get back cool. And we proceed to play basketball for the next three hours. No beef. Super cool. But he, he tickled me um, back into being kind of being his friend. Want to squash a beef? <laughs> <laughs> Tickle your opponent. <laughs> so, Want to squash a so beef? Listen, so listen. I hope you're ready for yours. I'm not. Because what I'm going to tell him is he's not going to disrespect my segment by telling a story that he told on somebody else's podcast. First of all, no, first of we all, not. This is what. No listen, names. Listen, listen. It ain't listen, saying no names. Listen, I, listen. Who was it? You don't even know. I anyway, do know no, who you it don't. was. Whatever. I know who it was. So, and I'm not going to let my segment so, so, be disrespected. You see how he tried? You I see didn't what try anything. He tried to I, do. First of all, where's human resources when I need them? He's right there. First of all, I'm Suspend not. Suspend this nigga, man. I'm not even on. It's not even me. It's her. Oh. I was giving her time to get herself together. So I told a quick story. Disrespecting my segment. Go ahead. Go ahead, Judge. It's your turn. I told a story. He told before. Stand still my story. This is it's my wild. truth. It's my and truth. just omitted the name. It's my truth. Hey, guys. I'm oh, going to have to plead the fifth here. <laughs> I'm going to plead the fifth because I am going to be writing a book and I want to save all my stories. You're going to be the first person. Look what you started. Look what you started. I didn't start anything. You started it. You started it. JoJo came here today. I didn't start this. And ran out on I Ain't Saying No Names. I, I never expected that. She ran out. I never expected I, I expected She JoJo ran off on the plug. To, Damn. To, to participate. She ran off on the plug. Shit. Everyone is participating. She's going she to tell all of her stories in one book. Mm. Impossible. Mm -hmm. She can't save one. No, you're right. First. It's not possible. It's not, she can't possible. save we one can't tell all of them. So you, she, we give, give us, us one. one. No pressure. Okay. Oh God, this, this is horrible. It's not pressure. I feel really bad about this, but since we're not naming no names, I guess it's okay. Yeah. 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 I just feel like this is this is messy. Like I don't like telling other people's stuff. I just feel sad. I don't like telling my own stuff necessarily. But somebody let me know that they were taking time off from making music because they got full from neck to ankle 
uh, surgery, meaning like sucked everywhere out. Uh. And that they were wrapped like a mummy. And um, this was someone that I would never expect to have um, gone under the knife, let alone to like an, that, which, which I thought was kind of extreme. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, telling you this tidbit to just say, you never know what bitches out here doing for real. <laughs> because even if it looked natural, you just don't know. So I, my mind was blown. And, and my I was just like, I, sometimes I feel quite naive to what people actually do to like look a certain way. And then I'm like, oh my God. Like you, you when, when they see you snatched in a little, little while, it's not just because you were in the gym for, for the last three months or whatever. It's because you, you were wrapped like a mummy. Like you a got mummy. it all. <laughs> Hmm. This is yeah. That's I've, my story. I've definitely shown story. up somewhere and, and seen somebody rap like a mummy. You before. have, yeah, 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 yeah. See, I, I just I, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, naive to yeah, it yeah. still. I yeah, I experienced the first before it was a wave. Before it was, it was a not a thing. wave back then. It well, was the not BBL a wave. wave and stuff. Before it was a thing. Cool before thing. it it was even like I didn't even know it was possible. Um, I I uh, had, had met a girl in city that she lived in and then we had just been in contact just doing this phone stuff and then when she came to LA I went and met up with her again and I was like I don't I don't remember that <laughs> being like like that <laughs> let me touch it I don't, <laughs> and you know as you go through the process of, of unveiling it he's like where did where did you where did you get this and, yeah. where did you get this and it those was, maybe from, it was Squatober and I couldn't it wasn't Squatober I, honestly no. because it wasn't a thing All at right. that time okay. All right. we're so early in the 2000s that I couldn't wrap my mind around how this was possible mm. yeah yeah I saw something and, in the gym yesterday that really defied all logic for me as far as proportion on a human being it, <laughs> I, I just, I just want. Here's what I want, and I think that maybe, I, maybe I want too much. I want. If you're going to get extra cake at it, I want it to match your thigh. Right. That's what I want. I want it to sit within the circumference of your hips. That's what I want. I I want you to not look like an ant. That's that's just all I want. I don't want you to not do anything to help you feel good about yourself. Whatever you feel like you want to do and what need to do. What if they want to look like an ant? I don't think they do. I think what happens is they wake up and they and they now they look like an ant and they have to decide if they're going to accept the ant life or not. Because you can you can you can see it on a diagram. That's one thing. But once things start to happening and and once the surgery is over and once like it's there's always a difference. There's always oh this is a little bit more than what what I what I thought mm, it was. Right. Oh yeah, this is this is and what do you do? Oh, it'll go down. Trust me, after right. about after about six months, it'll go back to. And sometimes it just it stays. It stays. And, you know, outside of it being unsafe, it becomes a little unsavory. And first I want to tell women, you are amazing how God made you. Amen. But if you feel the need for enhancements. I just feel like there should be, um, there should be a level of prof proportion. My OCD makes me count everything proportionately. Mm. I have to have enough slices of cheese to go with the right amount of crackers. All right. There has to be enough cheese on the Beyond Burger and to he, go he, with he the bun, crazy. or That's I have to right. take he the crazy. rest of he that crazy. bun off. I only need bun to go with the burger. It can't yeah. be excess. I don't bun. even know what that has to do. With the, but I'm, you know what? Yeah, it's just but it's just how I look at things. Yeah, in I say do what you do. That just don't mean I'm gonna date you. That's all. I, and and I want to say, as a female, as a woman, mm -hmm. there is so much pressure to look a certain way, to 
From from who? From it could be from us. I'm not saying it's from from men. No, no, I'm just saying like I think social media, I think that uh, media in general, the the images, the messages that we're bombarded with can be really hard to not be influenced by that. So I really feel with, uh, and by the way, that the person who I didn't name looks fantastic and looks natural. But it was my my naivete that was like, <gasps> clutches pearls. Like, really? Yeah. I just didn't know. So that was do my first time kind of that, experiencing that. Do you think that we in entertainment have to do a better job of recognizing and acknowledging um, beauty in its natural state? And we, we have to do that in everything. We we. We push everything. We are the driving force in culture, music. Right. Everything starts with us. Yeah. If we're going to be violent, it's going to be because of the music. If we're going to be peaceful, it's going to be because of the music. Yeah. Music used to stop wars. Yeah. Now it's starting them. Mm-hmm. So everything comes from... From the music. The music. Absolutely. We, we make it. songs about... Natural women, it'll be more natural women. We make songs about, I'm going to get this done for you. It's going to be more women trying to get those things done. So it's 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 also the music being made. It's also the music being pushed. Yeah. So mm-hmm. similar to what you said. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we were on camera before that, but the executives do decide what the narrative is is going to be. If as you far go as major. With, yes. If you well, go major. The mm-hmm. major is what we hear the most. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if we're talking about what's going on in hip hop, what's going on culturally that influences ac- across cultures, um, then that is kind of like the powers that be that are still pushing a certain... Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. So I don't know whose fault it is necessarily that we are as like consumer-driven or like into material items and looking a certain way and all that stuff, but it definitely is very pervasive. I mean, I think that to go to, to speak to the machine, the machine really thrives off thrives off of the demand. And so once the machine sees that there's a demand or a reaction to a certain thing, mm. then that machine is going to figure out how to overserve to get the most right. out of that. Mm-hmm. And as long as as long as the community continues to buy in, they will continue to super serve. Mm. I think it's just a two-parter. It's a two-parter because, like, it goes back to, like, when we first heard, when we first heard Bitch in a song. We was like, but then you was at the club and and you saw all the girls in the club saying, Bitch! And it was like, oh. You're like, it's okay now? So it works. Mm-hmm. So we can use, it. and from there, it just became super service. Where now it's just like, this is it's commonplace. It's not even a. I mean, and, to, and for for women and and other communities, it's we use it as a term of endearment, which is you no, know yeah, exactly. So, um, and I think that insecurity is there's so much money to be made off of our insecurity as women. Mm. So there's industries wow. that thrive off of our insecurity. Mm. So I think that they they keep, you know. This, oh, you could be a little smaller in the waist. You could be a little bigger here. You could be a little slimmer here. Why don't you get, you know, th- all these different things. There, There's industries that are predicated on us not loving ourselves as we are. So I think that's really important to keep in mind, too. I'm yeah. not saying that I'm uh, transcended it because I absolutely haven't. Mm-hmm. I definitely do all the lasers, all the things. I'm trying to, you know, keep sipping from the fountain of youth. So it's... It well, you look good. Is. Thank you. You look natural. Thank you. So... um we at the RB Money Podcast love you. However you want to be, however you want to be represented, <laughs> we love you. We love how God made you and however Dr. God made the doctor too. God made, listen, God made the doctor. God made the electrolyte. But, but, but God gave the doctor free will. <laughs> <laughs> It's all God made. It's all God made. You know what I'm saying? You can't take God out of anything. Mm -hmm. Um, Listen, ladies and gentlemen, um, this has been a very special R&B Money podcast for us because you are very special and dear to us. Um, That's a fact. You know that for sure. And we just want to make sure the world knows that. You have a home in my heart. Period. Point blank. 
um, we've 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 seen so many uh, so many of the same things together at the same time. We've been fighting at the same time. We've been rejoicing at the same mm-hmm. time, crying at the same time, and laughing at the same time as well. Um, I just I just commend you and salute you on continuing, and that's it. Continuing. Thank you. To do what you do, continue loving what you do, continue being an inspiration, um, beacon of hope, light for everyone who wants to not even just do what you do, but even just be you, be like you. Like, continue. Thank you for continue. your li- being a living example, being like the way you live, I'm saying, it is an example. The way you have moved, the way you've... Uh, just thank you for being who you are. And I, I'm very, very honored to be a part of this renaissance that the genre is is going through and to, mm-hmm. to see it happen, to be a fan of music and then to just, you know, be be a part of it all. So very, very grateful. I don't take that lightly. I know uh, what it means. And it's just, I, I really think that we're in, a, in an amazing time to be making music. So I feel very, por- very lucky. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, yeah. any last words, JV? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I, you know what? Yes, yes. yes. One last thing. Okay. When is the Brandy and JoJo? Oh. When is this going to happen? Because I don't know if you remember. Some mm. years back. Years back. Studio. I think I had been in a session with Brandy, and I mentioned your name, and then I saw you after, and I mentioned her name, and then I went on Twitter. And I said, I'm going to make a Brandy <laughs> and JoJo do it happen. <laughs> it's like one of the one things I haven't brought to life. Whoa. And I feel like a bit of a failure. No, it, <laughs> it's, 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 it's not time. over. I, it's not over. I'm, I'm waiting it's on this. It's not over. Call it out. You know what? Need it. We have talked about it. We are in communication. Mm. And we're, we're, you know, I think that is, we got to do it. As my brother Ray J would say. That is my one wish. Come on now. <laughs> that is my one, one wish. wish. Yeah. Woo! And listen, here's, a, here's another cool thing, right? As you are so dope as you are, you're still like, you're, you still have this openness of, and willingness to wanting to receive new information. Oh, like, definitely. And new, like when we went in the studio, and thank you for accepting the call. Um, to do somebody else. Oof, that song is amazing. Uh, you, you, first of all, you went Killed crazy. It. Killed it. I you was just, crazy. I was Killed just it. following your template. You went, but but you. we get in the studio and you're like, walk me through it. Give me, give me the vibe. Give me the, give it to me like line by line. Just give me the essence. Yeah. And I was like, okay, because I was just content with, <laughs> with you know, just Whatever you're the you're engineer. On it. I remember us walking through it line by line and within us kind of collaborating on what the essence was going to be you just went off into this place it just took it up like that song what people say about that song and your performance on this song on that song still they're still upset with me I mean I'm upset with you that we don't have a visual for that song yeah I think it's super fucking Dumb. So <laughs> there is a one to be. I, <laughs> it's such a good song. It's fair. It's fair. This is just super it's fucking. Fair. I thought there. I thought there was gonna be like a, an eloquent word yeah. to go after that. It's fucking dumb. Uh, that, <laughs> shoot the video, dumbass. This is the, this, yeah, we should, we're gonna shoot a video to somebody else. Okay. Fuck it. Why not? I believe because we, we can we do whatever we want to do. People love the song. We do whatever the fuck we want to do. People love the song. We're gonna make a video to somebody else. All right. You, we, are we doing that? Yes. Yeah, send me a treatment. Uh, what do you mean? Oh. I don't believe you. Oh shit! I love it. You don't it. believe me? First, no. you told a remix story to me <laughs> on my segment. Now First. you giving her bullshit right. about to somebody bullshit. else. Oh, pound me, P- okay? You're not gonna pound me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even get a pound because your ass ain't shot the video. <laughs> we are going to shoot a video to somebody else. That is my word to the creator. JoJo will not come on my podcast. JoJo's pissed. And, 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 She's pissed. And use the word dumb. 
<laughs> fucking dumb. Fucking dumb. <laughs> it was it was a it was a moment that so when you asked me to to be on that song, I'm like, Uncle Tankster, really? You know, it was it was so exciting that we were we were finally gonna do a record together, first of all. And it was it was it was it was a fan favorite. Yes. And sometimes trying to get, you know, get the partners to believe that the fan favorite should have a visual and all these things. Yeah, oh, totally. You know, it's I a tough that. sell, but I'll shoot it myself. I'll spend my own money. Don't charge me a lot for glam. <laughs> Don't hit glam me over the head. Glam gonna be a motherfucker. <laughs> glam, glam gonna be more you expensive. Know you gotta anticipate the, the glam. You know you gotta costs. anticipate Ooh, the glam. Because she's busy. Because she likes. She she gonna look That's good. Enough. She gonna look right. Listen, did you do you did your own makeup today, right? Yeah, yeah. You look amazing. So Joe's gonna do her own makeup. Hey, good shit. Hey. Good shit. I seen it. Hey. I seen you can do that shit. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Tank. <laughs> I'm Jay Valentine. And this has been the RB Money Podcast with our dog, our family member, our loved one. Yeah. Give it up for Jojo. Thank you so much for having me, you guys.